fill it. Okay, thank you, Sean. Oh, oh, thank you. I thought I disappeared then. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Doves for Peace. I'm uh, Dr. Keith Beasley, and it's my, my pleasure to speak to you again on this wonderful channel. Before we start and get stuck into my topic tonight, let us just find a few moments to reconnect to ourselves, to settle down into this, this evening together. So I invite you to just close your eyes for a few moments, take a deep breath in, hold for a few moments and breathe out. And as you breathe in, imagine that you're breathing in a sense of peace, a sense of being at peace with ourselves and with the world, breathing in the love and light that is the God within us all. Breathe in a sense of peace, breathe out all other thoughts and all other feelings. Good. Okay, well, thank you for joining me this evening. What I'd like to uh, talk about a little bit is... Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> what I'd like to talk about this evening is blessed peace and childlike wonder. How this idea of being blessed or feeling blessed is perhaps something we can associate with our inner child, with the way that children just naturally and spontaneously engage with the world. And that peace doesn't necessarily mean an absence of things going on, doesn't mean stillness or quiet, but the idea of inner peace just means being a piece of ourselves, a piece of the world, without any particular attachments, without any preconceived ideas. Which is oh so easy to say, but for us adults, it seems to be very difficult to do, but that's not true of children, is it? If we look at the kids playing, okay, something might happen, they might get hurt, or I may lose a toy or something, and there will be this initial frustration and expression of grief and pain and everything. But after a few minutes, tears or tantrums, and it's usually all over. So what is it that children have got, or not got, that makes them able to be more peaceful, more flowing, more natural? So that's my, that's my topic this evening. And well, just before I start, um, I'd just like to apologise in advance in case my connection drops out, uh, as it did last time I was, I was broadcasting. Um, I can't promise it won't, but if it does, it, I can normally get it back within a few moments. So please bear with me, and if I disappear within a couple of moments, I'll hopefully be restored. And I am looking for a longer term solution to these problems. Okay. John O'Donoghue once said, May you experience each day as a sacred gift woven around the heart of wonder. Wonder. Ah, the heart of wonder engaging with the world in a sense of, of wondrous anticipation that everything is wonderful because it's new and exciting and, and full of the love and light of life itself. But for so many of us as we grow older we, we lose this, this vital connection, this vitality, which comes from just being ourselves, doesn't it? From being true to who we really are deep down. Again, I use that word just, and that's the problem, isn't it? It's so easy to, to talk about this, and we know the theory 
of what it's all about. But to do it in practice seems so difficult. Why is that? Well, it's my experience. It's, it is because humanity has lost its way and that has certainly, I suspect, been the case for many of us. But what seems to be happening now over recent years, recent decades, but increasingly, is that more and more of us are recognising that we don't have to go along with the way things are in society at the moment. We don't have to get caught up in the commercialisation of things. We don't have to get caught up in the always needing to win, always needing to have the best or the newest. That's actually quite difficult to stand up and make that stance. But we can. We can. And going back to John O'Donoghue, it's interesting that in the two books which I'm familiar with and which are his most well known, the Adam Carter and his Book of Blessings, he didn't write about childlike wonder as such. But his whole approach was that, wasn't it? That whole approach, his Celtic spirituality, was about engaging in life as a child would. And he teaches us to take every day as a blessing. What can we gain from today? What is there going on that helps us to appreciate life? To live in an attitude of gratitude, I would say, with my, my Reiki hat on. For example, for example, I was watching on TV the other night the film Mamma Mia, the, the ABBA-based musical. And for days afterwards, I had the various songs from the show buzzing about my head. I couldn't stop them, but I didn't want to, because they were so childlike. They were so much about finding the joy in each moment, so much about living with, with depth and, and joy. And I found that by enabling, by, by keeping those songs in my head and tuning in and singing along with them, but other things that had been bothering me, things that had been getting me down, the ifs and the buts of life, were put to one side and I was able to, to really enjoy things a lot better. And so yesterday morning, Monday, Monday morning, the start of a working week, and my mind became overbearing, overwhelmed by things I needed to do, by the, the typical working week thoughts and feelings. And I have to be honest, I wasn't in the best frames of mind. And then I remembered that I've got this show coming up tonight, and I thought, oh, I, I must better prepare. What am I going to do? And, as you know, I enjoy singing. And so I was debating what to sing to you. And as soon as I had chosen the song and sang it, to remind myself how it goes, have a bit of a practice, I immediately felt better. There is nothing like a song to help us reconnect to the moment, how we're feeling. Or, if we need to be enlivened to help us in that process. So, what song was it? Well, I gave you a clue there, I've been watching Mamma Mia. So uh, please excuse me if I give you tonight a bit of ABBA. So, from the score of Mamma Mia. <coughs> I'm nothing special, in fact, I'm a bit of a bore. If I cracked a joke, you've probably heard it before. 
that I have a talent, a wonderful thing. Everyone listens when I start to sing. I'm so grateful and proud. All I want is to sing it out loud. So I say thank you for the music, the songs I'm singing. Thanks for all the joy they're bringing. Who can live without it? I ask it all honesty. What would life be without a song or a dance? What are we? So I say thank you for the music, for giving it to me. Mother says I was a dancer before I could walk. She said I began to sing long before I could talk. And I've often wondered how did it all start. Who found that nothing captured can capture the heart like a melody can. Well, whoever it was, I'm a fan. So I say thank you for the music the songs I'm singing, thanks for all the joy they're bringing. Who could live without it? I ask it all honesty. What would life be without a song or a dance? What are we? So I say thank you for the music, for giving it to me. And I say thank you for the music, for giving it to me. Thank you, Lord, for the music. Thank you for the ability to sing. I'll just ask you to, to reflect on that. How often do you sing? How often do you just spontaneously burst into to, to joyous song? Or you sing along with what happens to be on the radio, or something comes to mind and you just find yourself singing along with it. Isn't that a good example of childlike wonder, of being present, of being mindful, of being able to, to connect to, to the joy of life? It certainly is to, to me. And, it's certainly one of the, the ways in which I can get back reconnected if things are going a bit wrong. That isn't to say that I was singing cheerful songs. And again, coming back to the way children behave and work, is that if they're feeling sad or angry, then they express it, don't they? Nobody's told them not to, not when they're very young. And so likewise, we can do the same. And I will often find, if something has upset me, that to, to sing a sad, sad song is a wonderful way of expressing that feeling and regaining a peace with whatever it is that has made me sad. OK. So it's all about childlike wonder. This ability to recognise what's really going on, to be part of it with a, a sense of joy and, wow, isn't this amazing for whatever it is that's happening. And in preparing for today, I did a, an internet search on childlike wonder. And there were millions of hits, as you might expect, but the one that caught my attention was uh, a blog by Coyote Prime Running Cause I Can Fly. I don't know who they are, but thank you very much. And they included this quote from William H. Sheldon. I don't know who, who he is, but he wrote this, which just ties in with what we're saying at the moment. There are those much rare people who never lose their curiosity, their almost childlike wonder at the world. Those people who continue to learn and to grow intellectually until the day they die. And these usually are the people who make contributions, who leave some part of the world a little bit better off than it was before they entered it. And again, we all enjoy being in the presence of people who are childlike or, or the, 
the still connected child who can, can play and engage in life with, with depth and vitality. Another group of people who do this, who have this childlike wonder, are artists. A true artist will engage in the world with the same way. They will see the world through the eyes of a child and somehow recreate it or express it through their, through their art. And so let's go back to John O'Donoghue and his Book of Blessings, the Benedictus. And he wrote a wonderful blessing for artists. Page 35. Here we go. And this blessing is called for the artist at the start of a day. And for any of us who, who want to feel inspired, who want to feel connected to the joys of life and engage with the childlike wonder, I think this is appropriate. For the artist at the start of day. May morning be astir with the harvest of night, your mind quickening to the eros of a new question your eyes seduced by some unintended glimpse that cut right through the surface of a source. May this be a morning of innocent beginning, when the gift within you slips clear of the sticky wed of the personal with its hurt and its hauntings and fixed fortress corners. A morning when you become a pure vessel. For what wants to ascend from silence? May you imagine no the grace of perfect danger, to reach beyond lim imitation and the wheel of repetition, deep into the core of all, the unfinished and unsolved, until the veil of the unknown yields and something original begins to stir towards your senses and grow stronger in your heart. In order to come to birth, in a clean line of form that claims from time a rhythm not yet heard that calls space to a different shape. May it be its own force field and dwell uniquely between the heart and the light to surprise a hungry eye by how deftly it fits about its secret loss. to surprise the hungry eye. Ah, that's a nice image. The hungry eye, oh, so often we're just so tired at looking at things that, are, that have no depth. But if we can look at the world through a childlike wonder of a true artist, trying to glean the, the depth the meaning to all things around us, then that can restore our sense of hope and peace, can't it? Very much so. And so children are, are able to do that and to, to be present to move on having expressed how they feel. They've got no qualms about expressing how they feel. They let go and, and let God, which is something we can all do. But perhaps before we can do that we need to forgive ourselves for taking life too seriously and or forgive ourselves for, for being childlike at times and that's a wonderful thing to do as some of you know one of my topics that I, that I teach is emotional intelligence and all this ties together the idea of being at peace of ourselves being able to be childlike to express ourselves and move on from how we're feeling that's all to do with emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence or some people also talk about spiritual intelligence. But it's all about being true to ourselves and, and not letting our thoughts, our feelings overwhelm how, we've, how we need to be in any given moment. So how can we become more aware of our feelings and express them, more mindful? Well, many ways of, of becoming more mindful. There's all sorts of specifically mindfulness practices these days. And some of my fellow presenters I know tell you about those. Brilliant. My path is, is Reiki, Reiki healing. 
is something that I certainly find excellent for helping me to tune into how I really feel and to release it and move on from it. So just remember, if you would like to do something joyous, something childlike, then give yourself permission. Forgive yourself for having been too serious. Forgive yourself for doing something silly. The other thing it's worth reminding ourselves, and this is something I emphasise in my emotional intelligence sessions, is that we're all too preoccupied with the idea of our conscious mind and what we think and feel and analyse and the logic and ration, rationality behind life. But we are thinking, feeling human beings, aren't we? Just say to yourself now, as we're engaging in this little exercise, say with me, I am a thinking, feeling human being. I am a thinking, feeling human being. Just reflect on that to yourself. I am a thinking, feeling human being. And I feel good. I feel good. Peace is a feeling, something within us. And I'm not sure we really can put it into words, it's a feeling. So we need to remind ourselves to feel that we are feeling beings. So I'm talking, suggesting that um, we need to be more childlike in how we engage with the world, to see it as a sense of wonder. Does that mean we have to become children all the time? <laughs> no, no, I don't think that would work, would it? Because there is so much that we have to engage with where we do need an adult's perspective. We do, do need to be able to think rationally and systematically and so on. And this highlights another of the issues which I find myself emphasising in my Reiki classes and other workshops that I run. And that is the idea that it's not about being childlike or not. It's not about being spiritual or not. It's about recognising that we are all these different facets. And the true um, ability to be at peace of ourselves, to be true to ourselves, requires us just to be aware of what a given moment requires. So one minute, then yes, we do need to be childlike. For example, we're uh, being driven along a country lane and we see the, the lambs newborn lambs in the field. Now, surely we need to engage with that joyous moment of new birth, of the bouncing lambs in the field. Surely that is to engage in the wonder of nature. But then, when we need to do the shopping, we can enjoy new products, but we need to get the balance. We need to be able to shift from one to the other and not forget that we are both thinking and feeling human beings. So it's about transcending the duality of life. It's about acknowledging the dichotomy that is so often in the world around us. And this is something that came to me many years ago now. And as I was planning this, this session, I remembered the very first poem that I wrote. Well, I think it was. Um, one of my frustrations was that I don't remember ever having to, to write a poem at secondary school, and it was always analysing somebody else's. There was no creativity, and I was um, quite frustrated by that, I think. But anyway, in my early 20s, in 1981, I wrote this poem. It's very simple, very short. It maybe isn't a very good poem, but it, exp it gives an example of this duality and transcending the extremes. Snow. 
Children love it. Drivers hate it. In sun to artists it's heaven. In vice to travellers it's hell. The epitome of nature itself. Snow. Nature. And life itself is full of paradoxes and one of the things I did my my PhD on was this idea of, of transcending dualities, transcending the paradoxes and rather than labelling and judging things they'll accept well they're all part of what life is aren't they? They're all part of the reality. And that being at peace with ourselves and at peace with the world requires us to embrace the different facets of who we are, our intuition, our mindful approach, as well as our logic and our rationality. And this is something I say not just as a, as a Reiki master and as someone as, who has researched transcendent modes of consciousness, but as an engineer. For 17 years I worked in quality assurance of electronics. And there I found that sometimes being intu intuitive is the only way forward. And I had another example of that over the last few days. As you know, I've had all sorts of problems with internet dropping out. And the more I research it, the more I see just how complex this technology is. And since I know a little bit about uh, electronics and such things, I know even more the how detailed and how many things there are that can, can go wrong and the more I look at it the more I, I come to the conclusion that our poor logical mind just can't possibly get to grips of all of it. So on things like technology actually there's a very good case to be made for, for being more, more mystical, more intuitive or at least being able to switch to a mystical frame of mind. So if things go wrong, sometimes we need to call our expert, sometimes we just need to turn it off and on again, and sometimes we need to pray. We need to seek for higher guidance because after all, God is bigger than Google. God is bigger than Google. Everything on the internet is just a very small part of the oneness of life. And so this is, I think, one of my roles is to try to, to bridge the, the various give, um, bridge gaps that have, have arisen. The idea that either you're into science and technology or you're into the spiritual. Why does that have to be the case? Why? Well, we can be both. We can very much embrace the best that technology has to offer and embrace our inherent spiritual nature. So, as an example of that, I'd like to share now a little something I wrote in the midst of my, my technical challenges a few weeks ago. I call it the IT Fair. <clears throat> oh, ascended masters of Microsoft. Oh, angels of Apple and Adobe. Think heaven to my virtual worlds. O cherubim of chrome and of the clouds, O divas of Dropbox and deities of downloads, bring wisdom to my website. O gods of Google, O alpha and omega of Outlook and Office, bring peace to my PC. O fairies of Firefox and Facebook, O seraphim of software and software, bring blessings to my blogs. Bring blessings to my blocks. Bring peace to my PC. We're all part of the same oneness of life, aren't we? And isn't that what peace is all about? About bringing together our different facets of embracing the mind, body and soul that is within us and within the world around us.
So that is some of what I had prepared to talk about this evening. And I feel that's as much as I need to say. Let us spend another minute or two in silent reflection. Take a deep breath in and just breathe in this sense of peace, of being at peace with ourselves and with the world, at peace with our spiritual nature and with the technology with which we are now communicating. There is but one reality. Just be at peace with it, with ourselves and with each other. Thank you. I'll be around for a couple of minutes if you have any questions you'd like to ask me on the chat. Another sing. Oh, right. Okay. Um, another song. Right. Um, let me think. That's really. Let's sing a song. Maybe a song from. A song from this. Uh, okay. I will find a. Find a suitable song for you. Oh yes, here's one you can probably join in with. Um, another book I like to use um, when singing is, is this, Alleluia. 77 songs for thinking people, or I would say feeling people. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Ah, I just realized I don't know how the verse goes. <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? The light that shines is light of love. And this is where you'll find out that I, I can't actually read music. I can I can follow, and I can learn through. <laughs> oh wow! Somebody's drumming. Brilliant. Okay, I'm, I'm. I'm sorry. I don't know the verse to that. That's how 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 awkward. Let me find another one. That's another one. Oh, what's that one? That's lots of positive. Oh, I think I, I um, sang this one on one of my pre-recorded sessions that's probably now on YouTube. Uh, but this is certainly relevant to being present and allowing answers to come to us. It's uh, by the wonderful Bob Dylan. <clears throat> How many roads must a man walk down? Before you can call him a man, 
Yes, and how many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand? Yes, and how many times must the cannonball fly before the forever pan? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. How many times must a man look up before he can see the sky? Yes, and how many ears must one man have before he can hear people cry? Yes, and how many deaths will it take till he knows that too many people have died? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. How many years can a mountain exist? Before it washed to the sea, yes, and how many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? Yes, and how many times can a man turn his head, pretending he just doesn't see? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Blowing in the wind. And just feeling the wind on our face. Listening to the raindrops on, our, on an umbrella. The simple pleasures of life the childlike wonder of, of nature. And a very good example of this within my research I did for my PhD. So I was asking people about their transcendent experiences, those magic moments when they felt totally at peace with themselves and with the world. And one contributor, actually a PhD student like myself, described this experience of walking home in the rain, holding an umbrella and listening to the bit, 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 bit of pat of the rain on an umbrella and smelling that smell of rain after a long dry smell. And she felt so excited by, by it all that she put the umbrella down and just enjoyed the pleasure of it. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain, what a glorious feeling, I'm happy again. Just to spontaneously enjoy even things that can get us down if we allow them to. The pleasures of a natural world, childlike wonder. I hope at some point in uh, the next 24 hours you'll remember what we've been saying and allow yourself to, to smile at some simple pleasures and join in with them in a spontaneous way. So, uh, any questions anyone? Thank you. I think that's probably me done for tonight and I'll leave you with the thought that however old we might be, we still have a natural childlike wonder. And with that, we can bring peace to ourselves. Namaste. Good evening, good morning, wherever you happen to be. Thank you.